Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be donning our pith helmets and setting off into the vegetation, hoping that we don't catch Jungle Fever. Jungle Fever was released by Crown and Andrews sometime in the last 30 years. I have no idea when this was actually released. You can tell just from the clothing that the children on the front of the box are wearing that it's definitely vintage, but I can find no information on this game at all. There's no dates on the box, the instructions, or molded into any of the plastic pieces. And not only that, there is nothing on the entire internet about this game. This is one that I had never ever even heard of until it cropped up on eBay, saw it for the first time, and decided I had to have it just to see what it actually did. Now, I absolutely love games which incorporate a Rube Goldberg-style action contraption, one where there's a chain reaction of things happening in order for the mechanism to work. Games like Rumble in the Jungle, Mousetrap, and the Home Alone action contraption game all incorporate that kind of mechanism, and I just love the ingenuity and the engineering that goes into it. As far as box art goes, you can see there is really not very much to this. The actual game name itself has a little bit of drawing around it, but the rest of it is just a big photograph. To be honest, this game is really, really cheap looking. Looks like the kind of thing that you would find in your local supermarket in their budget range. But that jungle action mechanism looks really, really intriguing, and I really want to find out what it's all about. So, I think it's time that we crack this open and take a look at it in closer detail. We've got a couple of elastic bands, two dice, three different balls, four thick plastic elephants, a plastic crocodile piece, a plastic monkey, a plastic vulture, a couple of plastic bush or tree pieces, a plastic warthog with stickers on both sides and a metal weight on the bottom, a very odd looking plastic gorilla who looks rather more like a Sasquatch or Bigfoot, and four coloured plastic explorer playing pieces which have got stickers on both sides showing a front and a back. The game board itself is this rather impressive raised three-dimensional plastic jungle island and you can see that this thing is really, really sturdy. This thing is made to last. There are various lizards, skulls of different types, snakes, spiders and the main volcano itself. There are a couple of mechanisms already in place on the board which don't come off, but there's obviously a lot of moving parts in this game, so we're going to be referring to the official instructions when we're setting it up. So, let's take a look. Opening it up, as far as setup goes, this is the only section here. There are no diagrams or drawings of anything. Well, let's have a go anyway. Number one, erect the tree by pushing the trunk into the slot smoothly and make sure that it is erected at right angle. Well, I'm guessing that this is the tree piece, but there's no picture to actually tell me that. There's nothing in the instructions to say which slot or how that tree actually goes into it, but you can work it out. So what's next? Slide the slope into the centre of the volcano. This helps the volcanic ball to roll down gently when released. Now the slope's not going to fit in the top here, so it's going to have to go in here. But does it go this way round like this, with this curved bit at the bottom? Or does it go this way round like this? I don't actually know. There's not much to tell me. Okay, next, make sure the elephants and gorilla are fully up to the stop on the hinge. Well, that bit's pretty self-explanatory, at least, with the elephants just getting pushed onto their hinges and slid all the way to the end so that they're in place. And the same with the gorilla. And then finally, step number four, place the red volcanic ball from underneath the volcano gently to the mouth until the ball is held. So we take the volcanic ball, push it in from underneath up until it's gently held in place. Why? I have absolutely no idea. Why don't you just take the ball and put it on the top? Makes a lot more sense. And that, according to the official rule book, is everything set up. The only problem is, I've still got masses of pieces that I haven't used at all here and this is quite clearly 
not going to do anything. So we're actually going to have to work out ourselves what to do with all of these parts to get this thing to work. Well first the tiger needs an elastic band on the underside in order to actually get it to move. The tree will need an elastic band added for the monkey. Have the top of the tree completed and clipped together and have the ball bearing added to the top. And the monkey needs to be added, connected to the elastic band and clipped in place. The vulture needs an elastic band put in place on its pedestal. That then needs clipped in place. The elastic band stretched across and attached. The hook's elastic band attached and the vulture held in place by the hook. We then give the gorilla his boulder, set the crocodile in his river, put the rhino in his starting position, pull the tiger back, and now, finally, everything's set up and we're ready to begin. There's no actual start space here, so all of your playing pieces are gonna have to begin lined up off the end of the board. The object of the game then is very, very simple. Players are just going to roll the dice and move along the path through the jungle, trying to get up to here and past the volcano to win the game. As far as player autonomy goes, there are very few choices for you to make. Pretty much all of the pathway is just a continuous line. The only time you can actually make a choice of which way to go is here instead of going that way. You can go that way and over here instead of going that way you can go that way but that's it if you happen to land on one of these spaces that has small stepping stones connecting it to another space then you can advance from there straight onto there thus missing out quite a bit of the path there are only three of these shortcuts so they don't come up that often in the game and you're still going to be in danger in your new position as you're moving around the island, if you happen to throw a double on the dice, then you've got to activate that mechanism. So we're going to push down the volcanic ball, which is going to roll down the hill and threaten the tiger, who startles the rhino, who chases the monkey up the tree, who throws a coconut, which hits the crocodile, who snaps at the elephants, which scare the vulture, who flies into the gorilla, who drops a stone. And if any of those obstacles hit your explorer, they're going to have to go back to the start and begin again. Well, that's the theory. Let's see how it goes. Well, there's our first problem right there, because having that green ramp in there makes it get wedged in the opening and it doesn't do anything. But we can reset it and try again. Take two. And that, dear gamers, is about as successful as this game gets. The volcanic ball did activate the tiger and then the rhino, but the monkey moved all by himself just by the shock and the vibrations through the board. And as you can see, he even actually jumped off of his tree because there's nothing here on this monkey's mechanism which actually holds him to that tree. So he just comes off all the time. And that means that this section never actually gets activated did get activated though, here's what would happen. Well, we took out an explorer at least, even if it didn't activate the rest of the mechanism. Tell you what, let's remove him, get him out of the way, let's take him out of the way as well, and let's try again. This is one of the many other problems with this game. This third elephant here, just doesn't fall. Doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't work, which completely messes up the rest of the knock-on effect. But never one to give up, I've found that out of the three elephants that don't have the crocodile mechanism on them, there is one of them that does actually fall over but none of these are numbered so you don't know that until you find it once you found it though the rest of the elephants do go on here thankfully and it works 
This monkey is absolutely dire though. There is nothing holding it in place to that tree so that as soon as this hook becomes unlatched, it just falls off. And to be honest with you, there wasn't even actually a notch here on the back of the monkey for the elastic band until I filed that in. So the elastic band came off even easier. So we're gonna have to do something about this monkey so that the game works. So I cut and glued two little rectangles of styrene plastic onto the back of the monkey's mechanism. And now that monkey is permanently attached to the tree. He's not gonna come off of there even if he wanted to. So now with that in place, that monkey is always going to activate that tree and he's not gonna come off of there and wreck the mechanism. Okay, with those problems sorted out, let's try again. Here goes. That ramp is still a problem. The ball still gets stuck in the volcano because of it. So let's try taking it out and see how that does. Let's go again. Now, almost, but the problem is taking this out means that there's too much energy when this ball hits the bottom of the volcano, which sets off the monkey automatically without the rhino setting him off. You can see here that the rhino's also not been set off by the tiger. Now the reason for that is that there's actually a little black piece of rubber shock absorber here on the end of the tiger's track so that there's not too much energy produced when it bangs into the plastic here because that would knock other things on the board over. But it also means that the tiger doesn't actually travel far enough in order to be able to touch the rhino a lot of the times. So you've got to make sure that the rhino is pushed right, right over, because otherwise it won't work. So the volcano obviously needs the ramp in order to lessen some of that impact energy. So I've taken the ramp and I've cut the end off of it and filed it down so that it can then fit further back into the volcano so that the ramp should now hopefully not cause an obstruction in the exit for the ball. This monkey was also always getting set off too early, so I've added a weight underneath to its hook to keep that in place until it's activated by the rhino. Okay, I think that should be everything. So let's try again. And again. And again. And again. And again. This monkey is just not wanting to play ball. If I loosen the elastic band too much, then he doesn't knock the top of the tree enough to release this ball. If I tighten the elastic band too much, then he activates too soon. This really is driving me nuts. it makes me to see that this actually worked properly at least once but as I'm pretty sure you can tell this is shockingly bad engineering I bought this game out of curiosity just to see what it was all about and as you can see it's not a very good game the actual mechanism in the jungle has got some good ideas in there but the actual implementation of it does not live up to that. Now I know that a lot of action contraption type games do have problems and do go wrong a lot of the time. However, this one doesn't even work at all unless you make some major modifications to it. And no game out of the box should require cutting, gluing and filing in order to get the pieces to actually work. Even if all of the action mechanism in this did work, it still wouldn't be a very good game. This is one of those games that actually takes far longer to set up than it does to play. 
This is basic kiddies gaming at its absolute finest. It is roll and move in the worst possible kind of way. It is entirely luck with very little that you can do about it and if it works properly and the mechanism sets off then you're going to be in danger pretty much wherever you are if somebody rolls a double. And I found that a double can be rolled generally in 8 out of 10 games. That being said, when a double's not rolled, this game is even worse. You are just literally rolling and moving and nothing else happens. So best case scenario, you're playing this game, people are rolling doubles, it is setting off the mechanism, but the mechanism doesn't work so it doesn't go all the way to the end and get everybody, or there are players in the way of the mechanism which then attacks those players, sends them back, but then it stops the mechanism from continuing throughout the rest of the chain reaction. Get knocked over, get sent back to the start. It's a very basic concept which is not going to engage players very much. As I said, the production values on the box cover are really, really low, and that's continued in the instructions. I've never seen game rules with so many obvious spelling mistakes in them. We've got Ryon instead of Rhino, Daum instead of Down, and Oz instead of Is. And these are all basic things which should have been picked up straight away before printing. But on the other hand, the actual game board itself is really sturdy and solid, and well made. This obviously isn't just some cheaply printed cardboard game, there's a lot of expense has gone into factory tooling in order to produce the plastic pieces for this. So it makes it all the more curious for me that this seems to have just completely disappeared from history. I absolutely love discovering games which nobody has actually seen before or heard of, but it really does beg the question why there are so few of this game out there. So if any of you have heard of this game, if any of you do know about it, if you know when it actually came out, I would love to hear about it. As far as recommendations go, absolutely, hell no. This thing, it's interesting as a curiosity and as a collectible to add to a vintage board game collection, but as far as actually a game that you might play, no, definitely not. This is not a fun game. But I do have lots of other fun games, and there'll be plenty more reviews about those coming up in the future. So, until then, like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.